Uh, hi, my name is Jan. Today I will present um, cookie cutting and uh, Go. So my name is Jan Gorianz. I'm a platform infrastructure engineer coming from Ljubljana office. It's a new office since uh, October last year. We are uh, DevOps guys over there. Um, I'm a Golang dev by profession and a gopher by passion. And I'm really thankful that my son Tim and my soon-to-be wife Aida are with me in Barcelona uh, this week because Europe is burning. And here it's really pleasant. Um, <laughs> so uh, what is a cookie cutter? Does anyone uh, know what cookie cutter is, the project cookie cutter? Anyone heard of that before? OK, so for the rest of you who don't know, basically this is just one JSON file which holds some variables and a bunch of template files, uh, Jinja2 template files, these are Python template files. And basically that's it. I could end my talk right here, but let's dive deeper. How does this thing actually work? Uh, you would run the cookie cutter application and you would point it to one project, uh, a template project. And what it would do, it would parse the JSON file with all the variables. It would ask you, uh, do you want to keep the default value which was set in the JSON file or you want to change it? And once it iterates through all the variables, it then uh, runs uh, pre-generate uh, pre hooks. And these hooks allow you uh, as a developer of the template to uh, make sure that the user did not input any values which were um, not valid. Um, it would then parse all the template files, uh, changing the, the variables with what you uh, uh, inputted, and then it would run post-generate hooks. What those usually do, they, uh, they are intended to maybe uh, delete some files, maybe change something on the, uh, on the file system, and what you end up is a freshly uh, baked project, uh, which is basically like a bunch of boilerplate, which you would do normally for every project, but it's in a simple command. Um, and basically, that's it. We will see later on how it actually works, but that's the gist of it. This is the cookie cutting. Uh, why would you do that? So it saves a lot of time. So if you have like a complex, uh, project layout that you have to do for every project, this makes a lot of sense. Um, you save a lot of time by, by just using the cookie cutter. <coughs> it also allows you to uh, set company-wide uh, project layouts uh, and uh, best practices as a company or as an individual, as a team. Um, allows you to automate a lot of, a lot of tasks. And um, basically, in Kiwi, we use it just for that, for automatization for new projects. Um, so how, how would actually, uh, how would we start with the project? This is like a bare bones cookie cutting project. We have a cookie cutter JSON file. We have a post gen project hook. We will see later on what it does. And then we have this weird syntax, we see, which is a Jinja2 uh, templating syntax uh, for the directory. Uh, inside of that, we have two files. One is main.go and the other is readme. Uh, markdown file. We will see how we will uh, interact with them. <coughs> uh, the cookie cutter JSON holds, in this case, just two variables. This is a simple demonstration because I didn't want to um, overcomplicate it. But essentially, we have uh, a variable called app name with the default value hello Barcelona, and we have an include readme variable with the value yes or y in this case. Basic. The post gem project, this hook will run after uh, cookie cutter parses all of our template files. And what it does, one, uh, during the iteration of the, the uh, template rendering, it will input the include readme value into this variable and it will also compare it if it's equal to y. If this is true, um, uh, in fact, if this is not true, we will remove the readme uh, file. In this example, it doesn't make much sense, but internally when we, uh, at Kiwi, when we use this, um, we have like a bunch of different maybe um, folder structures and you choose one. So instead of just dumping everything to you, we clean up the project for you, you decide what you want to use and we remove the rest. And in the end, we will print all done. We will see how that works. Okay, so like the main uh, main.go file, it's pretty basic. Um, we will inject the cookie cutter app name. This is the variable from the cookie cutter JSON into a Golang variable app name, and we print it to uh, standard out. Nothing special, but 
the point here is not about the Go code, it's about what the cookie cutting does. So once we have everything ready, we will, uh, we will run the cookie cutter. In this case, cookie cutter dot. The dot is the local path. Uh, this path can be either a local or remote uh, zip file, it can be a, a Git repository, it can be a local path, whatever, anything that's valid, valid for cookie cutter. And once we run it, it will parse the cookie cutter JSON and it will ask us if we want to change anything. In this case, the first line would be app name. In the square brackets, we have hello Barcelona. If you want to keep it, we will just press enter. In this case, let's change it to BCN meetup. Do we want to include the readme file? Let's go with no. And then, as we saw before, in the end, the postgen uh, hook will print all done. Okay, we have our BCN meetup directory. And if, if I go back, just a few slides. Here you can see the cookie cutter app name is like, is the name of the directory. In this case, because we change it to BCN meetup, the directory will also be changed to BCN meetup. So if we run the main.go from that folder, we get hello, hola from BCN meetup. Easy as that. Um, how does Kiwi use cookie cutters? We use it quite extensively. We use it for uh, provisioning Kubernetes clusters, for serverless. Drajan has a lot to do with serverless uh, cookie cutters. Uh, we use it for py generating Python projects, Go projects, uh, for generating Docker images. Basically, anything that's repetitive, it makes sense to use a cookie cutter. So the cookie cutter uh, for Golang projects internally at Kiwi, it doesn't have a lot of Go code. That's not the point. I cannot write, we cannot write the Go project for you. That's your stuff. But what we can do is give you a lot of the uh, a lot of the um, environment around your code. So like the first thing that we do, we, we present uh, a standard project layout. It's based on the, the GitHub link here. Slides will also be available. Um, this is the unofficial official project layout. It's like a lot of projects have been uh, analyzed and the patterns that, that are most uh, prevalent are you have your binaries in the CMD folder. You put your internal packages into the internal folder, which is also a special folder for uh, Go projects. All your public packages go to the PKG folder. And if you have any examples, you put them in the examples folder. Basically, we try to, to keep it standard. We give you a make file for any, uh, any common tasks around running Go code. That's testing with or without coverage. Uh, linting, we use Golang CI lint. Uh, we also give you the Golang CI YAML file which we, with which you can configure it. Uh, we produce static and stripped builds of the CMD binaries. And we also give you a local GoDoc server for uh, writing documentation, basically to check how your documentation uh, is looking so you don't have to push to, uh, to remote and then look at it. One other thing that we also give you is a GitLab CI CD pipe. Does anyone use GitLab? Okay, so for those of you who don't know, GitLab CI CD pipeline is like a really rich environment um, for continuous integration and delivery. Um, in this case, we give you um, all of the, more or less all of the tools that you had with the make file, with a few more, you get testing, you get linting, you get building, and we also build Docker images uh, based on Alpine. Uh, we build them for branches or for tags. Uh, so when you release uh, a new version, you tag it, automatically it gets a new tag. So those are different. Um, we push them to the GitLab container registry, which we also use internally. Uh, and we also allow deployment to staging and production. So what that means, you can run a cookie cutter for our Golang template, uh, push it, and it will present a minimal Go code directly into stage or production if you wish. So when you push the, the bare bones uh, cookie cutter project in uh, GitLab CI CD, you have this. You have the verticals would be your, um, your stages. And inside each stage, you have different uh, tests. In this case, in the test uh, stage, we have linting and unit tests. Then we would build the binaries. We would include those binaries into Docker files. And in the end, you can deploy them either to production or to stage 
In this case, these are manual jobs. We don't want to just push everything. You can configure them to be automatic, but you have to push the play button, it will push it to prod. Okay, we also include a few experimental features. These are disabled by default. You have to enable them with the Y. Uh, but when you enable them, you get some Go code. We need some Go code so we can benchmark that. We can um, allow you to, to perform CPU and memory analysis via GoTool PProf, via Web PProf. Also, we perform escape analysis and runtime tracing. This is more or less to showcase uh, Go capabilities. Go has a lot of rich tooling around it, and most people don't know it. Um, Go is still relatively new at Kiwi. Kiwi is dominated by Python, more or less, but it's moving to Go. Um, and we didn't know how to present this, so we just put it in like a, like a hidden cookie cutter feature. Maybe this will evolve into something, but for now it's still experimental. Okay, so what's next? Um, since we have minimal Go code, this was the decision from the start to not interfere with our developers. We wanted them to start and not have to delete a lot of stuff they don't need. But we have a few features we could implement. We use Datadog extensively. We could uh, allow you to, to use libraries for Datadog, for Sentry, for Slack. Uh, over time, we will have a few shared libraries which will uh, uh, come up. We can include those. Um, again, we can always ask the user. If they want to include it, just put Y. Uh, also, we have multiple ways to deploy. We can deploy to AWS, to GCP, to Kubernetes, to whatever. Basically, anything that Kiwi does, we can put it in the cookie cutter and allow the user to um, make up his mind. There's a lot of room for expansion. But the problem with cookie cutter is it doesn't support branching. For instance, if your cookie cutter JSON file is really long, the user will always receive all of the questions. There is no way right now to um, have an answer negative for something that would impact all of the rest. So we could say, if you say yes to this, OK, go this way. If you say no, go that way. So this is kind of a big problem so far, but hopefully it will be fixed soon. Also, there's no description. Um, for instance, before we saw there was app name and include readme. That's the only thing you have right now. So when you present the cookie cutter to an end user, all they have is like the include readme. You could make it a really long variable, but then it gets in the way of uh, uh, gets in the way when you write the cookie cutter templates. That's sort of an issue. Um, basically, complex cookie cutter JSON file becomes a bit overwhelming over time. Um, okay, here are a few resources. Um, again, the slides will be available online, so I can skip this. Paulina. Uh, I'm sorry, I had a few slides more. <laughs> sorry about this. Uh, basically, uh, that's the cookie cutter right now. Um, are there any questions, anything you would like me to answer more specifically about this? No? Okay, thank you. So that would be uh, all I have right now. Is it written in Python? Or it yes, it's in Python. It also uses uh, Jinja2 uh, templating syntax. Um, yeah, but it doesn't mean you have to use it for Python project. It can be anything. And uh, did you write it for a company or it's an open source? Yeah, it's internal. Um, unfortunately, it's not open source yet. Uh, hopefully, eventually it will be. So you're asking about Cookie Cutter. Cookie Cutter is open source, but the Golang Cookie Cutter we use internally, or basically all of the Cookie Cutters are still closed source for now. But we have plans eventually to, to open source them. Um, Yes. Has anyone uh, attempted to create a generator for the JSON file, like a pre cookie cutter uh, thing to allow for the branching and the maintenance of the network? Well, the problem is because the cookie cutter JSON is tied to the templates. If the cookie cutter app does not find uh, the variable inside the JSON file, it will fail. So it has to go through everything. Um, that's sort of an issue right now. Um, hopefully, it will be fixed soon or maybe a fork will be made, I don't know. Um, for now, it's not so much of an issue, but again, as the projects grow, uh, it does become an issue because you, you would have like 100 questions. 
and most of them could be pointless because before you said something no and then it would still ask you for everything else. Yes. Does it uh, support all platforms? I mean, Linux, Mac OS, Windows? Uh, anything that can run Python. Oh. Yeah. yeah, it's basically Python script. Um, all it does is take a JSON file and then fill those values into templates. And other question, uh, how are you going to do a deployment? Uh, you, uh, going to, uh, you already can do deployment with cookie cutter or are you going to uh, implement it? To you don't deploy with the cookie cutter. Cookie cutter is basically just to generate uh, the boilerplate. It generates files for you. In, this, in our case, it generates a make file. It generates a GitLab CI CD YAML file for the GitLab CI CD. Um, you can use it for anything. I saw a uh, code for, I think it was Atari uh, assembly games, so it would generate a lot of assembly stuff that you had to have to make an Atari game, so you can basically run the cookie cutter and then start on the actual game, instead of just typing a lot of unnecessary stuff. So it saves time, basically cookie cutters save time, that's the gist of it. Anyone else? No? Thank you for your time.